Good evening and welcome to the 2024 Youth Month Oratorical Contest for the High School Division. My name is Sierra Herrera. And I'm Lily Vinch. Your co mcs for tonight's event. In a few minutes, we will hear from several individuals from the various high schools throughout the island who will speak on this year's Youth Month theme, Breaking Boundaries, Building Bridges, The Power of Diversity. At the end of tonight's event, one of these contestants will be selected to serve as our youth governor on Island Leadership Day, scheduled for April 19th. But do not worry, all other participants, including the alternates, will have the opportunity to take part in Island Leadership Day to serve in various leadership roles throughout the government of Guam, to include the Guam Legislature, the Judiciary of Guam, the Mayor's Council of Guam, and the various government departments and agencies. Just a few announcements before we begin. The restrooms are in the lobby across the stairway. Refreshments are provided in the lobby, and we kindly ask that you refrain from drinking and eating in the session hall. As a courtesy to our presenters, please place your phones on silent. Should you need to take a call, please do so outside of the session hall. If you must leave the session hall, please open and close the door slowly as it can be loud and distracting to those presenting. If you are taking pictures, please ensure the flash is off during the contest. And lastly, this event will be live streamed on the Guam Legislature YouTube channel. I would now like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our dignitaries who are with us this evening, starting off with our Honorable Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, our Maga Hagen of Guahan and the Governor of Guam. I would also like to recognize our Honorable Joshua F. Tenorio, the Segundo Magalahe Guahan, the Lieutenant Governor of Guam. And also with us tonight, the Honorable Amanda L. Shelton, the Legislative Secretary and Chairperson, as well as Senator of the Committee on Youth. I would also like to recognize those who are serving as our tabulators, timekeepers, the photographer, and joined by the representatives from the Guam Youth Congress and the Governor's Youth Advisory Council, if you could all stand to be recognized. <laughs> to begin this evening's event and give the welcoming remarks, I now welcome to the floor the Director of the Department of Youth Affairs, Melanie Brennan. Day and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much. I'm so honored to welcome you to this special, beautiful, historic uh, Guam Congress building um, for tonight's event. Tonight, you are going to listen, have the opportunity and pleasure to hear from six orators from the high school division. Tonight's winner will become governor for the day on April 19th, Island Leadership Day. Um, I would like to say to their parents, who are more nervous than the youth, that it is going to be a special and memorable event, and because they are breaking boundaries, all of them are winners already. Um, I would like to thank my bosses, the governor and the lieutenant governor, for always being advocates for asking the Department of Youth Affairs to really amplify youth voices. Uh, this is just one of the many, many projects that we're working on. I'd also like to thank Senator Shelton for welcome, welcoming us to this space and providing tonight's dinner. Thank you so much, and Senator Shelton. Thank you very much, Director Brennan. And as she said, yes, welcome to the historic Guam Congress building. It's our honor to have you here and to host the Department of Youth Affairs 2024 Oratorical Contest. And as I shared with the middle school contestants last night, this is a very special, uh, a very special event to be at because we don't open the session hall to many people for many events. This is really closed off just for our everyday session and for official state functions. But when the Department of Youth Affairs asks if we can hold such an important, an important event like this, the Youth Oratorical Contest in a special space, uh, we, we can't say no. And so we'd like to welcome you here and we hope that you really take advantage of what a beautiful space this is and admire it just as much as we do working in this building every day. 
And I'd like to, of course, thank all of the parents, the teachers, the supporters, the coaches who have been with you throughout the last several weeks preparing for your speeches tonight. We are so excited for all of you, and we know that this preparation has led you to tonight. So please don't be nervous. I know that everything that you'll say will be inspiring. Your bravery really is a motivator for us, your island's leaders, to continue the work that we do to uh, help you, our youth, and to uplift everyone in our community. And yesterday we celebrated with a resolution for Youth Month that said that our youth, we think of them as the youth of the future, the leaders of our future, but really you're the leaders of today. You're inspiring your peers, you're inspiring your parents, you're inspiring your teachers, your administrators, and that's something wonderful to think about, that you can be a positive example for everyone around you. And so I wish you all luck tonight. Don't be nervous, have fun. It's a great experience. You'll all have an opportunity at Island Leadership Day. I hope that some of you will choose the Guam legislature, hopefully be my counterpart, one of you, uh, on April 19th. So I look forward to working with one of you. All right, everyone, best of luck. And I just want to say one thing also about our Youth Congress and our uh, Guam, our, our Governor's Youth Advisory Council. I want to thank them for their leadership because a lot of what you've seen and you will see throughout the youth month of April has been youth-led, and I am so proud of them. They are so active and engaged here in the legislature every weekend at almost every public hearing, the Guam Youth Congress. Lily has been told already at school that she can't skip so much school as the speaker to be at every Youth Congress bill public hearing that we hold because they pass so many bills in the Guam Youth Congress. And so these folks are so engaged and I'm so excited for what they'll do for the future of Guam. So thank you very much to all of you and it is my honor now to introduce our MAGA Haga uh, who is here with us tonight, uh, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, everyone. Thank you very much, um, Senator Shelton, for also opening uh, this uh, audacious, I think, uh, chamber where a lot of really serious and powerful decisions are made that uh, provide the policies for uh, the way we run the government. I also want to thank uh, especially the Department of uh, Youth Affairs under the leadership of Melanie Brennan, who has been so very much focused on youth. Uh, and why is that? Because youth uh, is the generation of the next uh, group of people that I see uh, running our government. And we need to make sure that we provide whatever is necessary in resources and programs and so forth to support that so that we can further enhance their skills of leadership. I also want to give special uh, acknowledgement, of course, to more youth leaders, uh, Sierra and Lily. Um, both are very influential in giving us ideas and uh, ways that the youth think about things. I am especially excited to hear uh, the oratorical presentations because I am so excited about this very forward-thinking theme of breaking boundaries, building bridges, the power of diversity. So much on point for what we face in challenges today. What all this means is we need to make sure that we all work together in unity and togetherness and collaboration and cooperation so that we can make and continue to improve the betterment of our uh, island's quality of life. Uh, I'm excited to hear your speeches. I'm very excited to see your delivery. I'm also very excited to hear how you would bring this theme into your speech uh, based on reality and experiences. So I just want to thank all of you for organizing this and all of the people that worked really hard, Mike especially also along with uh, uh, Director Brennan, and uh, thank you. And I promise you, uh, whoever is the winner, you will have an exciting time being governor. And I also want to say uh, human emotions is very real, so it's okay to be nervous. 
uh, because that keeps you on your toes. So uh, let's begin and let's see what you have to present and good luck and best wishes to all of you. Thank you so much, Governor, Senator Shelton, and Dr. Brennan. Now we will move on to some of the rules of the contest. Contestants are not allowed to use any electronic devices during their presentation. There is a three minim minute minimum and a five minute maximum for contestants to present their speech. For every five seconds over the five minute time, one point will be deducted. There will be a two point penalty for 40 through 60 words added or missed. Anything over 60 words will, will result in disqualification. Contestants will be signaled at one minute warning as such. Ms. Corinne will show a sample. Lift in the poster board. <laughs> and then finally, after each presentation, judges will be given a few minutes to complete their scoring. Now the judges for tonight's event. But before I do that, I would like to note that none of the contestants knew who the judges were until now. <laughs> For our first judge, they are no stranger to the communications space. She is currently the Director of Communications for the Office of the Governor of Guam and spokesperson for the Leon Guerrero Tenorio Administration. Within her first year in public service, she was named one of the 50 under 40 emerging leaders in the government of Guam. Prior to her work in government, she was a woman to watch, having spent all of her 20s on TV as a primetime anchor and reporter for KUAM News. She is a proud graduate of University of Guam with a master's in public administration and a bachelor's degree in communication and music. When she is not at work, she is singing with her band, The Frequency, or performing jazz with Guam's most celebrated pianist, Patrick Palomo. When her schedule permits, she is an adjunct instructor at UOG, teaching her communication students to combat their fear of public speaking. Everyone, please welcome Ms. Crystal Pacos and Augustine. Our next judge currently serves as the 12th president of the University of Guam and she has made her story as its second female president in UOG 72 history. Previously, serving as senior vice president of the academic affairs and provost, accreditation liaison officer, dean of the School of Business and Public Administration, a former corporate planning and development manager, and a management consultant. As a first generation college student and public school graduate who has led to navigate through multiple challenges, she is a strong proponent of embracing island wisdom as an inafamalic framework. She has been instrumental in the adoption of university's diversity, equity, and inclusion policy statement of Inadahi Zen Inago Fi'ili A, respect, compassion, and community, and adopting a Poksai culture for care for students and employees. Her new strategic plan, Tulos Motna, navigating 2024 through 2029. She serves as a compass towards propelling the university forward in unison to collectively sustain the institution to deliver its mission to transform lives and advance communities on Guam and throughout our region. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Anita Borja Enriquez. For our final judge for tonight's event, she is a staunch advocate and supporter of our island's Manhobin. She is a resolute educator and public servant with a passion for education. With a background in early childhood education, special education, human resources, public administration, and organizational management, she has always enjoyed working with young children using creativity to implement activities that foster a child's overall growth and development. Currently serving as the acting chief of the divisions of children's wellness, she leads initiatives to sustain and contribute to Guam's thriving childcare industry. Her work in the Department of Public Health and Social Services complements her dedication to children, allowing her to make a broader impact on the well-being of children and families of Guam. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Heidi Kanata Lujan.
Thank you, everyone, and a special thanks to our judges who are joining us tonight. And now I would like to do the introductions of tonight's contestants. Sheyong An from Southern High School, 11th grade. Please stand to be recognized. Ava Dunka from the Academy of Our Lady of Guam, 12th grade. Mitekshi Ghosh from George Washington High School in 11th grade. Rianne Marquez from John F. Kennedy High School, 11th grade. Sin Soon Jin Oh from St. John's School, 9th grade. And our last contestant for tonight, Anela Payumo from Ukudu High School, 9th grade. And now to the main part of tonight's events, the speech presentation. Our first presenter for tonight is Mitekshi Ghosh. men may be created equally, but all men sure aren't treated equally. Close your eyes and imagine a game of chess. Can you see what piece of chess you would be? For a lot of us, we would consider ourselves just a mere pawn in a society where standards dictate our future and our fate. A lot of us consider the pawn to be the minority of the chess game. However, did you know that a pawn can actually win a game of chess? But how? They aren't given the same advantages or the same treatment. However, like chess, even though we don't live on a flat earth or a flat land, we live among people who are flat-minded. We all live on this straight path, but for each of us, it is with refined edges because we are all uniquely different. Guam is no amateur to the feeling of being a pawn, just a small island in the Pacific Ocean, only 30 miles long, yet filled to the brim with talent. The people of Guam are also no strangers when it comes to hard work. It is evident in our culture, in our traditions, and our history. So why, when opportunity arises, we are ignored? Why must we go an extra mile to be recognized? For students of color, there is already a fight to be noticed in the admissions processes for many colleges and even jobs. But why bother when the recruiters already have a set standard in mind? According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the employment population ratio for the people with disabilities was 19.3% in 2020, compared to the 66.7% for those without disabilities. And this is even when someone with a disability can provide the same work ethic as someone without. They beat the odds, didn't they? They broke the boundaries, so why is there still a lingering prejudice against them? Remember how I said you can win a game of chess just by being a pawn? Sure, diversity means being different, but it also means how you can use that difference as a beneficial tool. To live a fruitful life, you cannot just eat junk every day. You have to have variety. And to live in a successful society, you need to have people who have different values, morals, and cultures. Ifino Maule, a term used to describe someone who's well qualified for a position. But who sets those standards? Ultimately, it's you. You make that decision, and when you have an ambition or a shared vision, each individual will look at that cause from their own perspective. That is where diversity comes into play. No two people have the same exact experiences, but when you put those two people together, just imagine what they can do with their combined experience with a shared passion. Three words, they achieve competence. 
Some students applying to colleges nowadays have to hide behind their diversity and are scared to click the box asking them what race they are, as if it is wrong to be different. But why when our uniqueness is who we truly are and the fundamental building blocks that make us up? Why must someone with vitiligo cover up to appease the social media viewership or someone who learns at a different rate than others be tarnished? If you let yourself think of this uniqueness as a negative thing, you, make, you, turn, you let the standards win and you let non-conformal society win. However, when you turn around and you realize, no, what you believe to be a negative aspect about me is actually what makes me the most powerful. It gave me knowledge and experiences most others could not even dream of experiencing. My differences make me even more capable. Congratulations. You broke that boundary and you won that game of chess. That prejudice standard society? Yeah, you didn't let that change con yourself to conform. You embraced yourself and how understood how important it is to find solace in who you are. Today, in 2024, the word diversity is such a controversial word. However, I feel people, people have forgotten the true meaning of diversity. Diversity isn't about the numbers or statistics. It's about opportunity and giving everyone that equal opportunity. It's about how many boundaries you are willing to break, how, many, how far you are willing to go, and ultimately how you can use your diversity as a beneficial tool. That is the true power of diversity. Checkmate. Thank you to our first presenter, Matekshi. Now we will take a moment to allow the judges to complete their scoring. And while they do that, I would like to take an opportunity to speak on the significance of the trophy and meaning behind this year's theme. On behalf of GYAC, breaking boundaries, building bridges, the power of diversity was really the theme that spoke the most to us. The Governor's Youth Advisory Council is composed of people from all different schools, like the contestants. So we chose this topic not only for ourselves, but for its importance to our community. Naturally, we needed to break our boundaries in order to build our bridge to do our part for the community and our future which is exactly what the youth has. Every individual is unique and special, but it is our ability to come together that allow us to really shine. Unity is what fosters connections and encourages the youth to embrace diversity. It promotes inclusivity, empathy, and understanding, which are skills that are necessary for ne the next generation to lead our island. When we are able to come together, we can create transformative change and really make the change that is needed to ensure a brighter tomorrow. Thank you, judges. And now for our second presenter, Sheyong An. As a kid, I had already accepted the fact that I was no genius. I was not extra extraordinarily brilliant. I was not the smartest kid in the room, but there was one thing I was sure of. I was different. It was a lingering concept my parents instilled in me. Perhaps not different in the way I looked, the way I dressed, or the way I talked, I was different in the way I viewed the world. As a poster child of multicultural generation, I embody the busting streets of Seoul to the vibrant energy of New York, to the warm hospitality of Guam. 
Each place presented its own set of stimulation for my cerebral existence. This exposure to diverse perspectives resulted in a deep appreciation for diversity wherever I went. In January of this year, the JROTC program of accreditation presented the next challenge for Southern High School's 9th Battalion. Across more than 1,700 high schools nationwide and overseas, fewer than 10% of Army JROTC programs qualify for the honor unit with distinction. This designation signifies the battalion's success at the highest level. Our unit was to be evaluated on our documented commitment to continued improvement and service learning initiatives. The verdict would depend on the collective effort of cadets and instructors post-pandemic. As one of the top three leaders of the Knight Battalion, it was incumbent upon me to manage this organization of 150 people, each of whom exhibits uniqueness in personality and talent. The six month preparation period was a roller coaster of twitchy emotions as we tried to put all the relevant pieces together. I had to juggle the demands of the program's ongoing curriculum on top of the preparation for the big day. We also needed to clear the hurdle of an average of 95% or above in nearly 10 categories in order to earn the gold star insignia. I may be an outstanding presenter, but how can we earn the esteemed title of the honor unit with distinction with all the cadets being endowed with only presentation skills? Rather, we need a wide array of masterful skills. An able team that can operate rifles, that can command, that can keep track of inventory, and that can plan ahead. In fact, even after three full years of my involvement, I'm still terrible with rifles. I don't have the best vocals to command, and I sure as heck cannot set up the sound system to save my life. Yet, we were all leaders in each task we were assigned to. By doing what we knew best, we were all given the opportunity to contribute to the success of the common mission. D-Day soon arrived, and we could no longer back out. Our evaluator, Mr. Pratt, tallied up the scores. With every passing second, heartbeats filled the room. We knew if we didn't pass this time, we would have to wait three more years until our next inspection. And he finally announced 95.66%. We made it. But we were just 0.66 away from possibly losing that gold star we worked for months to reach. When times are good, when everything is going well, what's the point in working so hard towards embracing diversity. What's the point in all of this? It's in demanding times that the true power of diversity comes alive. The collective narrative of a team outshines the sum total of individualized talent. Life is more than a math equation. Life is a compilation of perplexing narratives and often poetic ironies. True diversity comes from the full range of perspectives, not superficial categories like race, gender, and age. Together, we create a collective narrative. Together, we create a masterpiece with each chapter authored by a different individual, each infusing a unique worldview. That point six six, such an insignificant number at a glance, that point six six, which handed us the first gold star in a decade, the point six six is what I call the true power of diversity. Thank you. Thank you. And while we give a moment for the judges to complete their scoring, I would like to share why GYC in collaboration with GYAC chose this year's theme that we're here celebrating today and hearing beautiful speeches about. We selected the theme, Breaking Boundaries, Building Bridges, The Power of Diversity for the 2024 Oratorical Contest to inspire young minds like these that fill this building with such power, to help them recognize and celebrate the richness of diversity in our island community and our global society. 
By encouraging the youth to explore and articulate the importance of diversity, we empower them to become advocates for inclusivity, equity, and social change. Through this theme, we aim to cultivate a generation of new leaders who are here to lead this island to the best it can be. New leaders who will understand the transformative power of embracing our differences and working together to create a more harmonious and inclusive world. I would now like to thank the following, the Office of the Governor, the speakers and members of the 37th Guam Legislature, the Office of Senator Amanda Shelton, Mr. Joseph San Augustine, Executive Director, and the AV and Facility Management Team of the Guam Legislature, and the 34th Guam Youth Congress and Governor's Youth Advisory Council representatives here volunteering today. We'd now like to give the rest of this time for the judges to complete their scoring. Thank you, everyone. We would now like to welcome our next presenter, Rianne Marquez. In the beginning of my freshman year, I remember going over a Latin aphorism in my English class, carpe diem. This phrase naturally translates to cease the day, or in my own words, living to the fullest in everything I do. For my next four years of high school, I took these two words as an opportunity to grow and essentially make an impact. But I also worried, I'm a young student from a small island, how can I possibly overcome the large endeavors and barriers of the world today? Then a sudden realization hit me. There exists 1.2 billion youths all over the world who share their unique abilities and are just as capable of achieving limitless accomplishments. And every single being in this room outside this room and beyond this room can do so too. During the summer of 2023, I had the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C., where I represented Guam with other insular areas in a civic education program. For two weeks, I was exposed to various human beings who shared their unique abilities, how their education was, how their shelter of living was like, their familial values, and even how their government functioned. At the end of the program, after discussing a wide range of political debates, opinions, and historical pieces, they held a cultural presentation for the island's present, allowing each student there to celebrate their differences. Frankly, our differences are what brought us together, giving us abundant, cherished memories and a lifetime of friendships to remember in our future. When I think of Guam, I think of the numerous cultures that bring our people together. 
Our haven is composed of numerous religions, ethnicities, ages, genders, abilities, and so much more. But of course, simply proclaiming diversity is not easy because of our imperfections and the urge of our surroundings to bring us down, we sometimes feel discouraged to share our own thoughts and our own ideas. But during these times of adversity, I'm reminded of my own penchants, singing and dancing, both utilizing music as its main source of feeling. Each music note has its own significance, but when combined together, we hear a wide range of complex melodies and harmonies. These can either sound like a blessing to one's ears or be a pain to one's eardrums. It's how we take in what we hear that determines the ambience of these notes. Similarly, we can either assimilate or rebut one's differences that bring our people together. Now going back to Carpe Diem, through my ways of seizing the day by embracing diversity all around me, accepting my distinctiveness from others and others' distinctiveness from myself, as well as sharing my unique goals to step outside societal expectations, I myself proclaim the power of diversity. Now, it's up to the people of the island, the country, the world, to also seize the day by seizing the opportunities that diversity can bring to other individuals all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, and while the judges continue scoring, let me share the background of the beautiful trophies that sit in front of us tonight. Guam Youth Congress drew and created this trophy, but only possible with the governor's office bringing our ideas to life. The Lottie Stone shape represents a strong foundation of which everything can be built upon. This includes the power of the youth and the foundation that we lay for our future generations. The tribal pattern represents the history and the culture of the Chamorro people and the island of Guam, while the silhouette of the young girl and boy represent the youth and the power that we hold, especially today, together here. The flowers surrounding the base of the Lottie Stone are the Gosali flowers, a beautiful native flower of Guam, representing the unique culture and beauty of our island. We can't wait for the winners to take this trophy with pride. Moving on to our fourth presenter, Anela Payumo. It is a human instinct to be wary of unfamiliar things. Anything that is unfamiliar, anything different, we tend to keep away from. It is a survival instinct to want to fit in because one who is different is alone. They have no one to help them fight or survive. The meaning of diversity is anything that makes us different from one another. And it is not something that we should avoid. Instead, it is actually something that we should embrace. Diversity creates change, which is something that many of us fear. This is the primary reason differences are often looked down upon and viewed as threatening. However, differences are what sculpt us into becoming better and creating better. Without it, the world wouldn't be what it is today, an ever-changing place full of diversity and its effects on us. 
Ukudu High School fosters a variety of cultural and ethnic backgrounds. We have people from Japanese, Korean, American, Filipino, European, Micronesian descents, and many more. Diversity is essential for the spread of ideas. One specific ethnic background that I'd like to talk about are the people from the Micronesian community. And there are so many amazing athletes and student leaders I know that come from this ethnic background. And there are many of these students that like to showcase their culture, often through their clothing, music, and dance at my school. Eventually, because of these efforts, a very successful club was established in our school and in my middle school, dedicated to sharing the Micronesian culture with others. This club has promoted embracing diversity so much that they have people who are from different descents join them and perform for us occasionally during school assemblies. It has, it has opened our eyes to the vast diversity that takes place in our school alone. The second form of diversity that I see very often is diversity in our genders and sexual orientations. Diversity promotes inclusion and respect. This wide range of genders and sexual orientations are so common in our society nowadays that there are more and more people feeling heard, seen, and represented. And through these changes and efforts by others, I see more representation of this kind in sports, clubs, and organizations. This freedom of expression is very significant because it promotes inclusivity and allows people to freely express their identities and love in their own ways. And as human beings, we should respect this idea and promote the freedom to love and express ourselves in the ways that we desire. The third and last form of diversity I'd like to introduce to me is the easiest to notice and my personal favorite, personality diversity. Because of this, it is so easy to notice just how different or similar you are to one person without even getting to know them so much. It shows us just how diverse our community can be. In my school, we have quarterly pep rally assemblies to build class morale and to recognize our athletes and their hard work. However, every class must put on a performance. And like all competitions, the best performance wins. As president of my class council, we have, to rec we have to organize this and practice for weeks prior to this event. Diversity is so important in these situations. It shows us that our differences are something that we can truly benefit from. Every person had a strength, something to contribute to our performance. We had dancers, prop makers and artists, screenwriters, choreographers, editors, and so much more. Through these differences, we were able to work together, combine our ideas and thoughts, and create something very presentable. We ended up winning second and third place for the previous pep rallies we had, a standard that as freshmen, we exceeded. Diversity is often looked down upon because of our fear of change and being excluded from everyone else. However, moments and situations like this show us that diversity is something that we should embrace, foster, and promote. Diversity unites and sculpts us into a more inclusive and innovative society. These forms of diversity are noticed because of the efforts and courage of people to represent themselves. There are so many more forms of diversity out there waiting for its turn to leave a mark on us and our society. And it takes one person to make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. We will now allow a moment for the judges to complete their scoring. And while they do that, I would like to announce that the winner of tonight's participants are invited to attend the governor's proclamation signing designating this month of April as Youth Month. This is set for Friday, April 5th at 1.30 p.m. in the large conference room at Adaloop. 
as we give another short moment to our judges, we are going to move on to one of our next upcoming events for this month for our parents and guardians and school representatives. The Council on Humanities and Arts, CAHA, in collaboration with the Department of Youth Affairs, is having an elementary school art contest. Students grades third through fifth have the opportunity to create a two-dimensional piece on what the theme, breaking boundaries, building bridges, the power of diversity means to them. All registration and supporting documents have been sent out to the heads of schools, so if you know someone who would like to participate, please encourage them to do so. Now we will move on to our fifth presenter, Sujin Oh. Today, allow me to speak on behalf of over 27,494 individuals that make up 15.28% of our island's population, the youth. I am but a small voice. I have but a small dream. I dream that we, the youth on island, diverse in our cultures, backgrounds, traditions, and belief, can all come together to actively contribute into bringing this island up, and rather than to just sit on the sidelines frustrated over incessant tyrants that tell us that we are not good enough. This frustration creates the sense of limiting belief that needs to be processed, otherwise finding its way towards unresolved aggression towards others. I've seen in numerous fights that go viral throughout social media and aggression towards self, as seen in sobering statistics released by the Office of the Medical Examiner. This shows that suicide rates among the island's younger demographic is a cause for concern. Breaking through bonds is more than just a way to rebel against restrictions. It's a courageous step into the unknown, a statement that the status quo will not restrict us. But pushing limits isn't enough on its own. If a barrier is broken and chaos remains, what good is this change? It is worth noting that there is a tomorrow word we might use to change the narrative of these troubling times. The word is fakai. This word bears the connotation of aggression, violence, or breaking down. But Paul A. Eric Forbes clarifies that this has not always been the case. By using the work, of Pale Pedro Palomo, we are told that far from the connotation of violence, fakai was used to denote a breaking apart in order that something might be partaken of. This shift most likely happened as the result of the word sounding very closely to the English curse word, which widens the divide of understanding as more English speakers came on this island. We need to build bridges to fill this gap. As we build bridges that unite us, we must tear apart walls that separate us, created from the misunderstandings that haunt us from our past. These bridges built with understanding, empathy, and collaboration will weave the story, our stories, into the fabric of humanity. There are a number of paragons and examples who promote justice and equality. I look with awe and respect at our brothers and sisters from Simon Sanchez, who took the initiative and advocated for themselves to calling for various factions of the government to set aside their political differences and begin the actual work that will lead to the construction of their long overdue school that the students deserve. Island Girl Power Initiative, other advocacy groups, various, various culture-based clubs, and student council organizations are the avenues by which we change the narratives and tell the stories that invigorates our hope for building these bridges. Building bridges and boundary breaking are not limited to large scale actions or international projects. They begin with each of us. It's a daily decision to confront our assumptions, reach out to other people, and learn knowledge from experiences that will take us beyond our own 
personal comfort zone. As we approach the dawn of a new era, we will change the narrative of being broken and recognize that the collective strength of our individual efforts can reshape the future of the island that we share. I am but a small voice. I have but a small dream. But if all the voices of over 27,494 young people, diverse as we may be, would blend together, then our voices will be heard, breaking any boundaries, building bridges to a future that would make our collective dreams for Guam a reality. So, Jews, Masi, Kamsamida, Arigato, Shesia, Salamat Po, Kinsu Shapur, thank you. Thank you, and as we give time to the judges to complete their scoring, we want to take this time to thank the hardworking staff of the Guam Congress Building and to the Executive Director, Jose Augustine, his protocol team, and to Rudy and the rest of the AV staff here, ensuring that the content is being live streamed on the Guam Legislature's YouTube channel, and it will also be uploaded later in this evening. Thank you. Moving on to our final presenter of this evening, Ms. Ava Dunka. That's different. <laughs> Why do we say that? Like when our friends ask our opinion on an outfit we don't like, or when a family member brings over food that smells a little extra sour. Is it because we have been confronted with something so unfamiliar that our minds cannot comprehend it? Or is it because we use different as a polite synonym for weird? But different is not weird. Different is not wrong. Different is why I am me and you are you. And that is beautiful. Diversity is defined as the state of being diverse or variety. So by default, diversity is everywhere. But is it? If diversity is not just the quality of being different, what is it? Because to understand the power of diversity, we must first know what diversity is. To William Dorsey Swan, the first person in the US to identify as a queen of drag, diversity was embracing his identity so that maybe others would too. To Jackie Robinson, the first African-American baseball player, diversity was men like him on that field. To Dr. Bethany Fiscum, an inspiring deaf pharmacist, diversity was proving that she did not need to hear to succeed. To Governor Lulian Guerrero, Guam's first female governor, diversity was proving that she could lead our island as well as any man could. These trailblazing individuals set boundaries on fire, and when the smoke cleared, bridges formed over the bodies of water that once separated them. These hungry individuals demanded a seat at the table, and when they sat, orders were placed to feed those who were once starved. They demanded a voice, an invitation, a place. How sad is it to know that not too long ago, our value was determined by gender, skin color, and background. Our ideas and talents not even considered because we were different, because we are different. 
How pitiful is it to think that people once wished for a world where everybody was the same? What kind of world do you wish for? I hope it is a world where one day the United States has its first female president. I hope it is a world where one day there are as many deaf pharmacists as there are hearing ones. I hope it is a world where value is given to each and every human being because strength lies in our differences, not our similarities. But to have the world we wish for is contingent on what we do today. So break boundaries, build bridges, engage with people who look nothing like us, speak nothing like us, think nothing like us. Diversity fosters creativity and fuels innovation. Diversity bridges the gaps between different perspectives and creates solutions. Diversity is how we will heal the world. Diversity is all of us. So, look around. And as you see the people of different genders and races and religions and backgrounds, realize that we are privileged to be in a place where diversity is not only welcomed, but valued. A place where we are able to be different without being divided. You and me, we are the power of diversity. This concludes our speech portion of the program. So now we will take a 10 minute break as we let the judges complete their scoring and tabulation.
Hi, everybody. We will be starting soon. So if I could ask all of you to please take your seats. And we will now turn the mic over to the Deputy Director Weekly. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Sierra. Um, could we give a round of applause to our MCs? <laughs> Sierra, she's the Vice Chair of the Governor's Youth Advisory Council, and Lily is the Youth Speaker of the Guam Youth Congress. Thank you, ladies. While the tabulators are uh, doing their job, we will now proceed with the presentation of certificates and lays to our participant and alternate. For this presentation, I would like to call to the front Governor Leon Guerrero, Lieutenant Governor Tenorio, Senator Shelton, Director Brennan, Youth Speaker Lily Vinch, and the Vice Chair of the Youth Advisory Council, Sierra Herrera. We would also like to invite the judges to take part in the presentation. As I call your name, please come forward to receive your certificate and lay and then please proceed to my right and wait for the group photo. Matekshi Gosh from George Washington High School. Matekshi Gosh, George Washington High School. <laughs> Cheong On, Southern High School. Cheyong On, Southern High School. <laughs> Rianne Marquez, John F. Kennedy High School. Brianne Marquez, John F. Kennedy High School. <laughs> Anela Payumo, Ukudu High School. Anela Payumo, Ukuru High School. <laughs> Su Jin O, oh, St. John's School.
Su Jin O oh, St. John's High School. <laughs> Ava Dunka from the Academy of Our Lady of Guam. Ava Dunka, Academy of Our Lady of Guam. We would also like to acknowledge and recognize our alternate, Frederica Herman, St. John's School. Although our alternate did not speak tonight, they are also required to do a, uh, prepare a speech in case her primary did not show up. So we did want to make sure they get recognized uh, for their efforts as well. Okay, we will now take the official photo. If we can have everybody proceed to the second level. Thank you, contestants. Thank you, contestants. You may please go report back to your chairs. Uh, presenters, if we can have you guys stay up at the front. We are now ready to announce the results. The runner-up for the 2024 Youth Month Oratorical Contest High School Division is Su Jin Ho from St. John. First runner-up, Su Jin Ho, St. John's School. And now, the winner of the 2024 Youth Month Oratorical Contest and your Youth Governor of Guam is Ms. Ava Dunka, Academy of Our Lady of Guam.
Ladies and gentlemen, our youth governor of Guam, Ms. Ava Dunka. If we can have the um, runner-up also come up for a fish photo with the youth governor. Oh yes, uh, I'm pleased to announce that this is the first time we've had a repeat. Ava Dunka was last year's youth governor. Of This concludes the oratorical contest. We want to thank all those who have contributed to tonight's event. And we would like to invite everybody out to the lobby to join us for refreshments. Thank you and congratulations to the winner and all participants.